The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, happy holidays to you. This is a Four Center podcast feed. I'm Ken Napsock. And I'm sleepy, tired Joseph Scrimshaw, but I'm happy to be here. Happy you're here. Uh, we'll get into it. Life adventures. Uh, <laughs> Joseph and uh, Sarah traveling uh, via aeroplane, which can be, uh, yeah, you know, a little bit of a Vegas gamble these days. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to get where you need to go or on the day or even the week that you need to get there. We'll dive into that. We'll dive into some fun news. We're going to dive into the rumor side. We'll talk about that, give you an extra warning, but have some fun there. Uh, birthday this day in history all coming up here but before we get to that I want to remind you today's podcast is brought to you by you know it audible get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash force center over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iphone android kindle or mp3 player a little bit later as always whoever force center recommends an audiobook we think you should try out on us we do want to go to our segment we call the ask boom 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 we <laughs> are asking all of you out there if you haven't already and many of you have uh, consider sliding on over to YouTube and subscribing to our channel there. We are asking for your help to get to 7,000 subscribers. That's the next big plateau we're trying to scale. And then we'll go from there. We got a lot of cool things coming. Uh, so we'd like you to consider it. One of the things we announced it, uh, but Joseph, if you want to dive into this one a little bit, we want to reset the table here. We've got a new show coming, YouTube only in February, called Figure Fights. Joseph, this, this is something I'm actually looking forward to a lot. Oh, me too. This is going to be a show we're going to do on YouTube. It's going to be short and fun. It's going to come out every two weeks to start, and then we'll see what happens. There are going to be guests, but here's the deal. What Star Wars fan has not had a conversation with another Star Wars fan saying, which of these characters would win in a fight? That's a fun conversation, but we want to go a level deeper, and we're going to ask which action figure would win in a fight. So not can Darth Vader uh, beat Walrus Man, but can this action <laughs> figure of Darth Vader beat this action figure of Walrus Man, Ponda Baba? Will that bright orange jacket make the difference in the combat? These are the kind of important questions we're going to be asking on figure fights. Absolutely. I cannot wait till we get to those ones that don't have weapons, but pointers and data pads. And how will that factor in? <laughs> A lot of cool things coming. A lot of poked eyes on figure fights coming up. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, we um, are looking forward to that. So head over to the YouTube channel there. Brian Ward actually just treat, tweeted out that it's the four-year anniversary of his animated uh, version of one of our databank brawl episodes, the mm -hmm. uh, famous and infamous Constable Zuvio versus Gus Tours uh, fight with Mike Black uh, doing one of the more amazing uh, character <laughs> characters ever, turning <laughs> Gus Tours into something so memorable. Check that out. It's on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, we uh, are going to get the news here shortly. We always like to catch up with uh, Life Adventures, see how Star Wars interacted. I'm, I'm going to go first, Joseph, because I, I have a feeling you, you have a little bit more to say. Um, <laughs> we're recording this episode on Tuesday, releasing a little bit later because of uh, uh, travel time. Uh, I uh, did not travel for the new, uh, for the holidays, uh, not traveling for the new year either. Uh, I stayed here. Grace and I stayed bunkered down, had a nice friend dinner at Smokehouse. Oh, Ron Howard and Clinton Howard, not there. I was looking. They weren't there, but it was packed. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, but other than that, um, I I think you could attach it to Star Wars. There's there's some times, actually, we just experienced it in The Princess and the Scoundrel, right? Where Mon Mothma says to Leia, look, you're going to get married. You, you know, you, you, you and Han are doing this. You're going to have a wedding. I'm going to help plan it. And you're going to relax. Yes, we just fought this war. Yes, it's still going on, but you're going to take a break. And so therefore it becomes Star Wars. I woke up Thursday morning, had some things to do, had a list of I'm going to record this. I'm going to get ahead of this. I'm going to I'm going to do my 2023 plan, all those things. And then Thursday morning, I sat down with a cup of coffee and a blueberry muffin, turned on Fortnite and said, uh, Grace, uh, <laughs> tell the world I'm gone. I'm going to do blank all for the next five, six days. And that's just pretty much been it. I even stopped working out. I didn't, I didn't. There was one day I texted my pal, uh, uh, you know, Jen Murrow, who we know. And, and she said, hey, you, you know, we, we had talked about maybe going for a hike with the dogs. And I was like, Jen, it's uh, three o'clock. I'm in my pajamas. We're not leaving. We're not leaving. <laughs> the biggest so. hike is going to be to the kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, can I attach Star Wars to that? Mm, yes, I can. Mon Mothma would have told me, you need to do <laughs> blank all, bleep all for the next few days. And I did it. But Joseph, you uh, had a lot more adventures. 
Yeah, no, I had a a, a great uh, but uh, really action packed uh, holiday trip back to my uh, ancestral home place of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, <laughs> in the larger Minneapolis yeah. St. Paul metro area. Definitely one of those vacations that I need a vacation uh, from. Uh, <laughs> we landed in Minnesota for the uh, some of the most brutal that Minnesota has. Mm. Uh, to offer there's a big big snowfall and then the temperature actual temperature uh around negative 10 uh the first day that i really had to drive around so the air is trying to murder you uh the slippery streets were trying to uh, throw your car into other cars uh mm. very happy that all of my driving on fresh snow and ice instincts uh returned and i did not smash up my rental car so that's a victory <laughs> Uh, I did not land it like uh, Han lands the Falcon in Solo, all mm. smoking mm. and in pieces. Uh, yeah, so a lot of lot of Star Wars adventures and in life adventures. So uh, a bunch more will will come out over time. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit uh, uh, shorter. Um, kind of big picture thing is I spent a lot of quality time with my dad. Uh, in the house that uh, I, I spent most of my, my teens and, and uh, in young adulthood uh, mm -hmm. in. So kind of kind of the family home. Uh, and, and as both Ken and I have indicated uh, with our discussions of Edie Karn, <laughs> <laughs> the maybe not great parent in, in Andor, uh, <laughs> there, there have been ups and downs in our lives. Um, and I have a lot of happy memories in that house. And I have some not great memories uh, in that house. And I hadn't actually stayed overnight there since I moved out in 1998. Wow! So it was a real, uh, it was a real purging of demons, and that that's the point that I want to get to. I had a great time talking to my dad, looking through old photos. My dad taught me to play the drums, so we we and he's rusty now too. So we sat down and took mm -hmm. turns uh, playing drums and, and trying to get our get our groove back. Uh, literally. Um, all sorts of uh, great and fun stuff. Had a great holiday with my um, uh, uh, with my in-laws and my brother's family and all those things. Yeah. Um, but what the, the kind of the the life adventure that relates to Force Center that was really nice is uh, I left there on Christmas Day morning to then go uh, back to where Sarah was staying with her family. Mm. And uh, my dad loves coffee. And he's like, don't leave. Don't I I'll know if you didn't drink the coffee. Don't leave without drinking the coffee. <laughs> He had to go to work on Christmas Day. So I got my coffee. I went and sat in my old bedroom that I've talked about on Force Center. Mm. That my, mm. That's my my twin son's window where I'd stare out at North <laughs> Minneapolis and go, there's there's something more for me out there. Uh, yeah. uh, and just really took the time to to not deny the, the negative, mm. but to kind of like try to whisper to my young self of, here are all the things going on in your life and how amazed would young me be you know yeah. and one of the first ones is that y y you make part of your living by talking about star wars <laughs> right and and a community ha has grown up around just the fun and joy uh, of discussing this and diving deep um and that was you know one of the real healing healing moments to kind of purge some demons and and i really owe that to to force center and, and to you and jennifer and to this community so that was really, uh, really, really uh, positive, mm. great, great memory. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then then the other just kind of fun Star Wars thing uh, I, I want to share. I'm, I'll put it on some of them on social media eventually. Yeah, my dad went and I went through all these uh, family photos, and I found uh, all sorts of photos of my uh, Star Wars action figure <laughs> mm. <laughs> receiving adventures. I believe I found the picture from when I'm four years old of uh, the first Star Wars action figure I was gifted. Uh, I'm holding in my little grubby uh, toddler hand uh, the original Kenner uh, Luke Skywalker action figure. Mm. Uh, and I, I looked at that photo and then I stopped and Googled. He's like, what is the actual value? What, what's it going for? <laughs> and I turned to my dad. I was like, you, you, you see what I'm holding there? Like, that's worth uh, $2,500 to $3,000 now. <laughs> my dad was like, no, holy bleep. Uh, <laughs> So in the, so I get I got Luke and then I got two Chewbaccas which I always remember because I remember being like I'm going to give one to my brother and thinking I was being really good. Mm. Um, what I didn't remember is there's a, a photo of me uh, with both the Chewbaccas in the package, and then the next photo uh, that my parents took is me just totally conked out 
I have fallen asleep on the living room floor with a Chewbacca in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, open though, right? Oh, oh yeah, man. open. Uh, I, I did. I did some unboxing. Yeah, you did some unboxing. Uh, I did some yeah. unboxing, and I showed that photo to my wife of me asleep on the floor with a Chewbacca in each hand, and she was like, "My God, you're Chewbacca drunk." <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's amazing! Those photos belong in a museum. Oh yeah, man, I, I will definitely, uh, I definitely share some. There are a lot of fun, uh, yeah. fun Star Wars photos over the years in those. Mm. Wow, wow! No, that's a lot. I know there's a lot going out there. Yeah, the weather, everything about it. Uh, every time I saw you post a picture, I just, I just kept playing replacement songs in my mind about <laughs> skyways and regulars. Uh, crazy out there, but yeah, no, I, it's such a. Such a Star Wars thing that the, our relationship to the past, right? It comes up so often. The future, the past. Kylo Ren screaming about it. Uh, Ray being afraid of it. Uh, trying to form her identity going forward. And Luke staring at the suns. It's all there for a reason. All there. That's and when you when you're aware of it in real life and in real time. Uh, yeah, it's even more powerful, I think. Yeah, it was. It was funny. Just my, you know, my dad and I just talking through things. Different things from Star Wars kept coming up, and I by like the second day I had to be like, you know, I, I do have other things in my life, Dad, but here's another thing from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was getting a little worried about. It. I, I yeah, that's a separate conversation. I, yeah, I, even some of the more <laughs> serious arguments I've had in the last year or so, uh, tough arguments, tough conversations with friends and and even my mother. The amount of times I'm like, ah, look, it's just like the Star Wars idea, and. and I, it it probably seems like a joke to them. Like the the inf the insight might be okay. I see your point, valuable, but kind of this like is that is that all you have on your mind? <laughs> like, well, kinda because yeah. of work, but yes, yeah. It's like political stuff. It's life mm -hmm. stuff. It's you know what's been going on with you. It's you know mm -hmm. where did you learn that? Like about real world things. Because I'll be like, oh, that that thing is a reference to this real that thing in Star Wars is a reference to this real world thing. You know, so like mm -hmm. almost all of it was just like, hey this is a way that this this story relates to the real world you know it wasn't like yeah. that and then Darth Vader has a cape dad like <laughs> yes. 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 I wasn't yes. just describing things that happened in Star Wars and, yeah. and then and then Obi-Wan <laughs> fell but he caught the ledge dad he caught the ledge <laughs> yes yes uh, yeah that's a, actually an excellent excellent addition and clarification now yeah, yeah I'm not just going do or do not there's no try yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really happy that you got to have a, a relaxing uh, a Star Wars adventure. I had a really uh, fulfilling but emotionally <laughs> daunting uh, Star Wars journey. There you go. There you go. Well, you get some hopefully some time to recover. I know you you landed early this morning, so you're a champ for being here. I think most most podcasters, myself included, would have pushed the day, but you are here to power through. No, no, I'm excited uh, to get back to it. Really excited to get back to it. Well, we are going to get back to it. Some breaking news from a long time ago right here in our galaxy. And we will uh, once again, I don't know why I kind of broke into a Kirk there. I think I ran out of my, ran out of some breath. <laughs> We've got rumors. So yeah, I, I give a, a rumor warning. I think we talk about this a lot. We don't want to also break down our thoughts on scoops and leaks and, and rumors and all that kind of stuff. I think people know where we stand on that stuff. It's also changed over the years, how people are making money off of it, how people react to it is, is, has changed. And so my thoughts personally, I don't speak for Joseph or Jennifer, my thoughts have changed on even discussing rumors. But sometimes a rumor uh, emerges and it is part of the Star Wars discourse, part of the fun celebration, and uh, also is not surprising because it's something we kind of uh, knew. And so all roads lead to Hera rumors spreading. And let's talk <laughs> about the character because all this means is we're getting Hera. And the uh, scoop leak style report that went out suggesting Mary Elizabeth Winstead is playing General Hera Syndulla uh, in the upcoming Ahsoka series. No official word on that, we'll point out as well. Kept refreshing StarWars.com. And of course, there's nothing. Uh, but Hera being in the series is not something one should consider a surprise, uh, having appeared in the teaser footage at Celebration. Though, even that footage, you could easily say it was her cousin Kara. You don't know. You know, we don't know. <laughs> Circumstantial evidence. But um, the fact that Hera's in there or that uh, Ahsoka's shaping up to be, and we'll say it, I don't say this cynically, but uh, Rebels 2.0, right? That, mm -hmm. That's not a surprise. So, Joseph, we'll start there. Uh, this uh, idea, this this concept of Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Hera. What do we think about that? And what do we think about the idea of Hera being in Ahsoka and in live action in general? Yeah, this is all exciting. Even if this rumor is off base, uh, we know that Mary Elizabeth Winstead is cast, and I think she's a phenomenal actor, uh, great acting chops, and very, very funny uh, and mm -hmm. warm. So, hey, if she's Hera, great. If she's not, 
you know, mm-hmm. if she's a space Mary Elizabeth Winstead, also great. That's a win. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And with with uh, Sabine, you know, uh, confirmed cast, the actor out on mm-hmm. stage at Celebration, Chopper on stage at Celebration. Uh, if mm-hmm. people didn't get to see the the teaser footage, yeah, it is a shot from the back. But yeah, d- d- a Twilight lady with green laku. It'd be very cruel if she were not Hera, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I feel pretty great that Hera is in it. And then the only question is, but it's great that Mary Elizabeth Winston is in it. It's great that Hera is in it. Are they one in the same? We'll find out. Um, yeah. To, yeah. To your actual question about uh, the, the power of Hera being in Ahsoka in live action, we've talked a lot, you know, in the last uh, couple months about like it or not animation is not as widely viewed and it can still be like hey animation's great but live action's the big time right that's still mm-hmm. something that is you know circling around in our culture good bad or otherwise um yeah. and i think a character like it or not a character being in live action draws more focus and attention to the character mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. uh and i think Hera's character really deserves that attention right uh Hera more than deserves the Cobb Vanth bump, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that he was animated, but like Bo-Katan is probably the better. Like, yeah, now look at mm-hmm. the Bo-Katan action figures everywhere. People are interested in, you know, hey, what's what's the Bo-Katan hit list uh, on uh, Clone Wars and Rebels so I can get caught up on the character, you know? Yeah. Uh, this causes people to watch Rebels again or for the first time or causes Disney Plus to go, here Here are the, you know, uh, 10 Hera-focused episodes you should watch on on Rebels. That's great, you know? Mm. Um, I, I think the other thing we, we'll talk about more, but I think it's, I'd be thrilled if Hera was in live action at any age, in any era, but this era is so interesting for yeah. her because I think, you know, two key parts of her character is that she... She very much values family, you know, her family of origin back on Ryloth is a lot of her storytelling. And then the, the found family of uh, the rebel cell and the rebellion. Uh, so she loves family, but then also she's known basically nothing but rebellion and fighting for in her entire life. Mm-hmm. So in this time period that Ahsoka appears to be set in, sometime after the Galactic Civil War, Hera's family is a little shattered uh, and she finally maybe doesn't have a war to fight. So mm-hmm. what great time to catch up with this character where two of her defining traits are in some kind of uh, uh, conflict. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Oh, wonderful. I'll start there. I think you and I went to some response. She appears in Squadron, so she's been an animated and video game form, right? And in the <laughs> books and, and the Alphabet Squadron. And she's such a respected and valuable leader to the New Republic during that era. But, uh, you know, as the story moves forward, I, yeah, we are in this post-Galactic Civil War era. We're in this, uh, what do we do now? What do we build now? Uh, Mothma saying maybe it's time to stand down with some of the uh, military, all that kind of stuff that's at play. And she kind of represents all that. I, exactly. This life, she's only known that life. That's a real valuable asset to, uh, uh, you know, an element of her story, which makes her an asset to the storytelling going forward, uh, of how you could see a lot of that through her eyes. And then it's someone who has perhaps a say in that, too. Uh, I don't know if all that's going to be a play, right? I don't expect a Hera Mon Mothma sit down in Ahsoka. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't expect that at all. It'd be good. be good. Uh, but, I, yeah, just her showing up in there. And, yeah, I echo what you say about the live action thing. It's a conversation that's been happening a lot, as it should. And uh, the Ahsoka of it all, uh, the the Rosario Dawson casting and, and what that did to um, uh, the, just the Ahsoka fans, I'll just say that about the, uh, about the controversies around that. And then at the same time, I don't have any proof. I, I heard it talked about, but that, hey, maybe some of the Clone Wars numbers went up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it is. And, 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 and I, I would, I, I'm here to defend Star Wars animation because I love it. But I'm guilty of that too. Ask me about Pixar. I've never connected with Pixar films. I just, I don't know what it is. I just, I like, I like the, sure, I cry the first five minutes of up. I don't remember the rest. And, and I, so I'm guilty of not looking down at it, but just looking at it differently, right? Just connecting with it differently. Yeah. So I don't point a lot of fingers at, I have friends too. Like, I don't know. I heard Rebels was good. I, I don't know. Cartoon, 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 grumble, grumble, grumble. I can only 
fight that for so long, but if it's in their heart, it's in their heart. So yes, these characters, I think there's great value uh, to the Star Wars saga to have them kind of emerge, break out. If it's an actor like Mary Elizabeth Winstead, yeah, so many wonderful things. And by the way, what a what a dinner table at home if if uh, her and Ewan come home from <laughs> dinner and order some DoorDash and sit down with the kids to have some food and once <laughs> once Obi Wan get out of here, like what a what a Star Wars couple there. So. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think that's why I want to talk about it. I do love this character. You touch upon it. There's such a warmth, the motherly side, all those kind of kind of wonderful things. But but also, I'm excited about one of the things you said too. But a lot of that family that she's known to be the mother of is just broken into pieces right now, mm-hmm. and there lies some kind of uh, tension with the character. And uh, you know, I'm not expecting her to be in every episode, every scene. I don't know how far into the Rebels 2.0 uh, uh, Dave and the team are pushing Ahsoka, but we know it's going to be present, and she has to be there in that regard. So uh, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, it makes me wonder how much. <clears throat> excuse me, how mm-hmm. much the 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 show is going to kind of just be about healing and rebuilding, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, there's there's plenty of conflicts to run into in the search for Thrawn and therefore Ezra, which is what we are assuming. We could be wrong. Uh, but you know, Sabine's probably been through some stuff with uh, the events on Mandalore. P- maybe some not yeah. good things happened to her, to her, <laughs> her family of origin yeah. as well. So a lot of healing to be done. A lot of healing to be done. And the next couple of questions I admit kind of are on the same ballpark, Joseph. So let's just go where we want to go on this. But I'll start here. Hera is both a a, a new character brought to us by the Disney era, uh, but already that's a classic character. She showed up in two, 2014. That's a lifetime mm. ago. Uh, therefore, that means Hera, to you and I, like you and I joke, I still kind of think Foo Fighters are a new band. Their their first album's just out, right? Oh, that was 1995? Sorry. Time works in a weird way. Uh, so she is uh, both new, she's a classic, but she represents so much to a, um, we'll say new generation of fans, but that's not, uh, I'm not saying that in terms of age, just those who connect with Rebels from 2014 on in a way that they had not connected with other parts of Star Wars yet. So what do we like about the character? We've talked already about a lot of, a lot of things, what she means, but we just like going ourselves, going back to 2014, 2015, or even now you're doing a Rebels rewatch. Yeah. I think I, I really, really enjoyed that Rebels rewatch. And Hera is one of the characters, like I remembered a lot of the, the beats and the ideas of Hera, but it was just so rewarding to see them, to see them again and to see them sometimes like really acknowledged, highlighted, even discussed. Uh, mm-hmm. by the other characters and i think you know there there is a connection with with leia right but mm-hmm. in this era leia is younger and leia is also coming from royalty you know so hera has got a, a really different perspective in that she is coming from pretty much a life of you know rebellion um mm-hmm. but i think what what is similar is that hera has this great central star wars idea of like compassion and combat <laughs> mm, yeah. for lack of a better term that she is an extremely loving person who also knows it yes the empire must be fought she never doubts it she is yeah. the driving force right that's why she left uh her, her father uh, jam uh, on ryloth and said this needs to be fought across the entire galaxy she helps get kanan back into the fight she helps you know center you know her her kind of uh of children <laughs> of mm-hmm. uh, of ezra and sabine on you know why are you fighting uh and fight the right way but never ever doubt that you have to fight and and i love that we see her having these moments where she's the uh the compassionate uh, uh motherly figure but mm-hmm. then also when she gets her back is up against the wall there's you know that that great animated lip snarl and just the fury of like <laughs> I am taking the empire out, you know. Uh, yeah. And then on top of it, the 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 real great character trait that she is an amazing pilot. Um, mm-hmm. I really loved uh, in, in the last season. Uh, it, it's Ezra and Sabine stealing the Tie Defender, and uh, Thrawn is watching, and somebody is like, oh, "I bet that's uh, that that." Uh, is that Captain Sindula and Thrawn? I'm paraphrasing. Thrawn says something along the lines of, "If Sindula was flying, the ties would have been destroyed much sooner." <laughs> <laughs> the even and Thrawn's she, like, "Yeah, she's a she's a problem in a ship. She's too damn yeah. good." Yeah, uh, and, yeah. And g- good pulling in Thrawn's, uh, you know, pronunci- pronunciation of that word. <laughs> pronunciation. Sorry. Yeah, they yeah. they do not. Uh, I think that must be a choice. Uh, they do not uh, care about <laughs> the pronunciation of uh, Hera Sindula's or Harrison Dula's name. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. 
Uh, well said. Uh, well said. I think, you know, going back to, to meeting this character, uh, we'd already seen a lot of great stuff with uh, uh, Twi'leks in Clone Wars, to be, to be clear, right? Mm-hmm. But... We grew up with you, you can't deny, and, and we are we love Ula around these parts. We we have a Star Wars in Memoriam up there. That's I think our most popular <laughs> video alone <laughs> with twelve thousand views, which I know is small in the grand scheme of YouTube, but for us, uh, Ula is a great character. But there's no denying, Joseph, that uh, we kind of came of age in this generation of you thought Twilight, you thought sexy female dancer character. That was just mm-hmm. kind of the trope. Uh, and at times Clone Wars moved away from that. Uh, at times, you know, there was even some of the character designs. You're like, ah, you're, you're, you're trying to sell that angle, whether you're, it's intentional or not. So I love that Hera showed up in 2014. And, uh, you know, that wasn't what she was about. She was about so much more. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was important. I thought that was part of the new era. Uh, her, her, she was combat ready, both by design, skill set, her viewpoint. You're so right. But then such a wonderful, well-rounded character. Part of the depth of Rebels that un- unfolds in front of you is you can point at the screen, especially if you read New Dawn, you go, yep, father figure, mother figure, droid, drunk, droid figure, whatever. They're all there, right? I get it. I get <laughs> it. I get it. Chopper. <laughs> yeah, dr- drunk, <laughs> drunkle chopper. Yeah, drunkle chopper. I get it. I get it. I get it. You can almost get cynical. And then she starts to become this well-rounded character that is trying to allow herself to feel love in a time where maybe she doesn't feel that. She's also got fear. She's got family issues. And, and taking a character like Cham Syndulla, who's uh, a character I think is celebrated in Star Wars as he should be for being this rebel, a rebel from, uh, from, from Go. And then also adding a wrinkle to him that, you know, what, what damage did that do to his uh, daughter? And what, what are they experiencing? How did she grow from that to be this well-rounded character that has strengths, that has weaknesses, that has fears? And it seems like, yeah, well, that's a no-brainer. But I, I think uh, for myself, um, I saw Palavar's Ed Greer tweet this the other day about, you know, if your idea of a strong female character starts and ends at uh, Linda Hamilton in T2 and Ripley, uh, Sigourney Weaver, you know, and he makes a fun joke. And, and I, we grew up in like, especially studying screenwriting, that's what we meant or that's what we were taught. Like you, mm-hmm. that. Tank top, muscles, <laughs> gone and fight, which by the way is great. Yeah, nothing and, wrong with it. Nothing wrong with that. There's and more. I think, so for me, a little bit older, when Rebel, to, to just be able to celebrate that Hera just represented so much, as she should, and as these characters always should have. And I think Leia and Padme fall into that as well. But it was just great for the new generation, especially early on out in 2014, for her to be there. She, I just really grew to love that character a lot. And, and all we should definitely give props to Vanessa Marshall. Mm-hmm. Who just voiced that character? And I know, I know this conversation, Joseph, about some of the who 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 gets to go to live action and who doesn't. Mm-hmm. And and you know, I I guess I can get somewhat cynical to people who maybe aren't, maybe just kind of learned enough. Yep, welcome to the voiceover voice actor industry, <laughs> where you are you are not going to be at the table for these roles. Uh, and sometimes it's just based on hey, maybe how, uh, how the, the character design, all that kind of stuff that's out of, out of the actor's hands. But uh, shout out to Vanessa Marshall. So that's what I really just love about the character and what she has meant. And yes, she is a mother figure. And she's a mother figure to the fans of, of, of Rebels. <laughs> and, and you and I always talk about being at that Mandoverse panel um, at, at Star Celebration, just sitting amongst all these fans who are like, love all the Star Wars, I'm sure, but Rebels, man. And you can feel that energy and you can feel the love for her. And I, I'm excited that she gets to live in a new form there. So, yeah, you're yeah. saying a lot of great things. I, I, I think that she does have some of the uh, that. Yes. Yeah, late 80s, early 90s, you know, strong female in that she's an amazing pilot. She's great with mm-hmm. the blaster. She can absolutely handle herself. But then I think the show so early on really, I think, establishes her as the the mother figure who's also doing um you know, which happens not not in all families, but in some families mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. that, you know, it's something to be discussed uh, that she's also doing all of the emotional labor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. her withdrawn family, who, for Kanan, who's not all there, who's for Zeb, mm-hmm. who grumbles, for Sabine, who has issues that she will not speak about, for Ezra, this kid who's coming out of his, his shell, for Chopper, who still can't think about Y Wings without being traumatized about his own past. <laughs> yes. She's the one who's like, Yes. I will take it all on for you. And they know it. You know, that 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 yes. very early uh, Mellow Run episode where they're supposed mm-hmm. to be getting, you know, supplies for, for being, you know, a, a rebel cell. But the, they're also like, but but mom likes this fruit. It, it, the mm-hmm. whole vibe of that is we secretly know she holds everything together. So mm-hmm. here is our 
fumbling attempt to make her breakfast in bed on Mother's Day. Like that's what that fruit <laughs> episode is about. You know, it's about a lot of things, but in terms of Hera's character, mm-hmm. that to me what so brings together this this maternal figure yeah. who is not just the emotional laborer, but that is a, definitely a part of her character. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with you that it's not like that all the time, and it shouldn't necessarily be that all the time. But you can't deny that there's a little bit of the "I'll handle all that plus pack your lunch for school." I got you, like <laughs> you know, and 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 that's the power of the character and the realism of the character, and uh, yeah, well rounded indeed. Yeah, uh, you and get was there me being ex- a great. Oh, so go, ahead, go no, ahead. no, I was like, you get me excited for Rebels rewatch. So yeah, it was just the number of times because she is the pilot functionally. It's also like uh, I sent the kids and you know, uh, Dad, Kanan on an assignment, they messed it up and I got to go pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> Stranded at soccer practice. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and, uh, and I love some of those layers again, uh, you know, for this particular character, what's going on. Uh, what can, so if, if, if Harris here, and again, in, in the alphabet squadron book, she, she appears in, in squadrons, uh, appears uh, as well along with Ray Sloan. Uh, but now here, live action, I I can't, Ahsoka limited series, I can't remember these days. It might have been one season, but, you know, with any, it doesn't, if, if Ahsoka hits, we'll have five seasons if they mm-hmm. want. Yeah, let's, let's be clear. Uh, but the character showing up and showing up, uh, I'm, I don't want to say the term graduate, but I think I just, I went there in my brain. So mm-hmm. apologize to <laughs> animation fans. I don't mean it like Bob Chappick did a little while ago. But with Harris showing up in live action, no matter who's playing her, uh, which means we might have the character going forward in more Star Wars storytelling. And so, Joseph, what, what do you, what can the character represent uh, going forward in the Star Wars New Republic era of storytelling? Yeah, I think that this is fascinating because she's so set up to be uh, a, a steadfast character who fought all the way through the war, right? In mm-hmm. uh, the Alphabet Squadron novel and in the parts of the Star Wars uh, Squadron's video game that I finished because I'm very, very bad at that video game. Uh, I got to play it on like story <laughs> mode or, or, or just watch somebody live play it so I can see the story. Uh, but the point is like so much of that storytelling is about the, the victory at Endor was definitely... Mm-hmm you know, game changing, but now this, this wipe up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) is dragging and everybody's hurting. And here's Hera still there, still running everything. Mm -hmm. So committed. There's even, uh, the, the exchange in, uh, I think the final season of rebels kind of dealing with, with Kanan sensing his end and, and, uh, their romance. But within that, you know, Kanan's kind of poking here of like, hey, if we if we win this war, which I know you believe we're going to someday, you know, what's going to happen? It's like the galaxy will be free. It's like, no, for you. Mm. What do you want? You know, and it's kind of about their relationship and their romance in that moment. But I think that is like this big, resonating, interesting idea for mm. Hera. If the war is won and she does not know quite what to do with herself. And I can see a story uh, trying to speculate responsibly where she's one of the person who sees the empire in every shadow because she just doesn't know this huge yeah. part of her life. The thing to be fought is gone. Mm-hmm. And maybe this is a story where she's trying to get past that paranoia, <laughs> yeah. but then a Sokin family go off a uh, uh, Thrawn hunting and maybe yeah. encounter the, the baby first order. And like, she's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I love what you're saying there too. And, and I think, um, just knowing the new Repu- new Republic era, those first five years outside of of, of Andor and, and Book of Boba Fett, just a lot of stuff that was put forth in the books, aftermath and Bloodline and all that kind of stuff. That era story time, she fits in real nice for me. Uh, as I said, she she's she's a new character still. She's still new. She just always seems you know like she was there from the beginning, yeah. and that's what I just love. And having her there alongside Han and and Leia, whether they have scenes together, I'm not expecting that. Uh, De aging looks great in Indy Five, but I don't, I'm not expecting uh, Han and her <laughs> to have that fight about who's the best pilot. But just knowing that that character is there, steadfast, like you said, aware how you can deal with some of the the the, the things you're talking about of uh, shadows around every corner. That's intriguing to me. Uh, but I just like that, uh, you know, I'll just say I like that Leia might have another ally, <laughs> that Mothma mm-hmm. might have an ally. Or maybe Mothma doesn't have an ally because Mothma wants to stand down a bit for, I think, good reasons. But Hera uh, maybe struggles with that. There's a lot there. And we'll see. I'm excited how she will factor into Ahsoka and Ahsoka's journey going forward. Because th- Ahsoka 
wasn't necessarily part of that family, right? She was adjacent. She's the friend mm-hmm. they invited over for Christmas dinner because she had no one to go to. You know, <laughs> come She's on like over. The force auntie, right? If there's a <laughs> force, force problem, yeah. Hey, auntie uh, Soak is coming over. She's bringing the potato salad. Yeah, like so. There's a lot of potential, but this leads to my final. Question here, Joseph. Uh, I think it's an important one. I think it's. I think we need to discuss it. Do we think Jason Sandula will show up at any point? I'm not saying Ahsoka, but at any point in any other storytelling affair is going to be around. What do we do with Jason? I, I want to hear a, a, a song parody of uh, how do you solve a problem like Sandula, uh, <laughs> meaning Jason in particular. I, that ending of Rebels is, is all the tags for all the characters are so beautiful and so interesting and it speaks mm-hmm. to the possibility of more storytelling and yeah uh, it's great Star Wars stuff of the you know the spirit of Kanan and, and Hera's love live on in this character yep. <laughs> yep. but then like oh man that's so beautiful how do we stop him from being slaughtered by Kylo Ren great <laughs> like <laughs> yes uh, so I, uh, to answer your question I I hope he either shows up or is acknowledged, you know, Hey, let's, let's yes. trap Jason in the unknown regions where Kylo can't get him necessarily. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I, I guess maybe he could anyway, uh, find him, you know, toddler mortis. I don't know. Um, yeah. but <laughs> the other idea for me is like, maybe it would be an interesting thing for Jason, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we've had a lot of stories now of Luke half trains somebody or they start mm-hmm. training and they're like, <laughs> thanks <I'm out>. yeah. <laughs> Jedi master Luke eh, really starting to hurt Luke's feelings. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if I'd be jazzed about another, like he trained him a little and then he was like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought it'd be, be really interesting to go a different direction. And, you know, maybe Jason is on Ryloth learning the old ways. So that family mm. can continue on that side of things. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I at least need him uh, acknowledged. I, I do think it's a fun, um, uh, challenging drop into the cannon bucket that Dave put there. Uh, you, you know, I don't know. You know, thoughts on that? But I, I like the character. I like what you're saying. The end of that story and what it means for for Kanan and and Hera. A lot there, and a lot you could do with it, uh, including the the answers. Do they all have to be slaughtered by Kylo Ren? Eh, maybe not. Or the Knights of Ren? Maybe not. But w- what do you do with them? What do you do with this character? Uh, do he and Grogu just kind of run off to another part of the galaxy? I mean, what do you what do you do? But that's fun. That's fun. I just do want to acknowledge because, um, and I've mon- I mentioned some of this stuff with other characters before, but you know, you got Chewbacca and his family. And, you know, what what's going on there? Is it just I'm away on a work trip that takes two decades? I don't know. Does time work different for Wookiees? It does not make me think less of Chewbacca. You don't want uh, to be held up on so much realism. You know, where Han's like, oh, we got to go back. Uh, Chewie's got, you know, Lump of Waru's birthday party. Like, you, you know, I understand you're not going to address that. <laughs> I make this reference over to the world of Game of Thrones where Davo Seaworth, this great, wonderful, warm character, still has a wife. After eight seasons, seven that he's in, still has a wife. Don't know where most she is. Of the stuff he's doing, he doesn't really want to do. Like, well, yeah. I, yeah. But, uh, because of my honor, I need to leave my wife for decades at a time. Decades. And hey, look, you know, I, I remember John Adams and Abigail Adams were apart for years when he was in France. I, I totally get it. But I, you know, but I think about it. I just if 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 Harris shows up, the, the, the character's been mentioned. I think a little bit, or I'm trying to remember and. Alphabet Squadron, I don't think Aftermath, but like, I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, I mean, we could pull it up on old uh, Wikipedia, but I feel like he was acknowledged. Yeah. I think he was acknowledged, but it's just like, is he just in space daycare forever? Is it private school? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I kind of feel as though, especially, you know, you have Dave, Dave in charge. Dave loves his characters and Dave loves uh, plotting it out as he should. They're his at this point. Um, I, I do feel as though I'm not going to put my fist down if, if it doesn't happen, but just least explain a little bit, you know, the yeah. nanny's got him this week and I can go to the unknown regions with you. <laughs> hey, look, we're not alone. I started to just put in Jason Sindula into the, the search bar to go to Wikipedia and it came up. Jason Sindula father, Jason Sindula force sensitive. Is Jason <laughs> Sindula in the Ahsoka series? Jason Sindula fan fiction. Is Jason Sindula a Jedi? We are not alone in the questions we're asking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a potentially big big and important character, and it's a, it's a, in a, in a post credit scene of most. So yeah, another one popped up that is Jason Sandula, a Knight of Ren. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, if he joins those ranks, you know, and I know they're still going. They're in the uh, Galactic Civil War era with uh, working with Kira, right? So you know, if he graduates into that group, maybe. Uh, 
At least yep. it'd be an answer. It'd be an answer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Well, that is our discussion on Hera, the character, uh, the rumors. We'll see what's true or not. I, I, I you know, believe uh, a lot of this is happening here, but we uh, do like to wait till it's official. We do not like sharing set leak photos and all that kind of stuff. But hey, uh, a lot of news out there. So listen and take in what you want. Uh, but we really do love that character and can't wait to see more. Uh, before we take a quick break, we're going to do a Four Center Recommends, an audiobook we think you should try out on us. We've moved past Padawan, Joseph. What do we have? And we are very excited to dive into Star Wars, colon, The High Republic, colon, Path of Deceit by Justina Ireland and Tessa Gratton. Like uh, Ken said, we finally read and discussed Padawan and enjoyed it, and I can't wait to get back to The High Republic. I uh, can't wait indeed. They're sitting on my shelf there. I'm uh, getting ready. All right, download your free audiobook today by going to audibletrial.com slash force center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash force center for your free audio book. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. On the other side, we got some Bad Batch news and a birthday to celebrate. Stick around and more Force Center. Welcome back to Force Center. We're looking at Star Wars headlines. You know, Christmas holiday, you wouldn't expect a lot of Star Wars news, but there's a lot of things out there to discuss if you're looking for it. And one of them is the confirmation on Bad Batch Season 2 titles and the release schedule. This has been around for a bit, to be clear. Not breaking news, but our chance <laughs> to discuss it and kind of also look ahead to Bad Batch Season 2 in a way. Uh, Disney and Lucasfilm officially released the titles and air dates for Bad Batch Season 2, and uh, we'll start here, Joseph. Right now, one of those four center temperature checks. What's your anticipation level for the second season of Bad Batch? Oh, uh, to quote K2SO, it's high. It's very, very high. I'm, I love this show uh, so much. Um, it, it's, it's in the legacy, obviously, of uh, Clone Wars and Rebels, but there's just something very different about it because mm -hmm. of the dynamic of this weird clone a team and Wrecker mm -hmm. and tech in particular are just so uh, fun and charming and, and Omega. And then I really love this immediate uh, Imperial takeover period. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a part of me. It's like, if I knew nothing about what might be coming up in the second season, I just want more of that. Mm -hmm. um, but then knowing that all these interesting uh, characters and ideas are, are, are popping up uh, makes me really excited. I'm, very ex Gungi and Sheev. What more could I want <laughs> than I want a Gungi and Sheev for Bad Batch season two? I think yeah. the other thing is just, um, and I know it, it might be an, an ongoing discussion. I really want variety in Star Wars uh, mm -hmm. for myself as a fan. And I absolutely love the uh, much more grounded, uh, brutal yet still hopeful Andor. Uh, the horror of tyranny and the day-to-day -day reality of Tim Carlo's damp socks right there on screen. Yeah. Love it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I also really like the other extreme of Star Wars that all of the same ideas are there, but they're expressed in a bizarre, fun, pulpy, adventure of the week type way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really in the mood for fun, pulpy, animated series side of Star Wars uh, mm -hmm. as a compliment to Andor because I like them both. Yeah, well said. I echo those thoughts there. I think that's over the last couple of months might have been where mine was going first was to the, you know, what will be the eventual comparison between the two, a competition between the two that doesn't really exist and shouldn't exist. And I and I want to say this. Sometimes I think, uh, you know, we, we get a little grumpy or want to fight back against it as, as, mm -hmm. as we should maybe, but... I also I understand it. You you and I were talking off air. I, I like a lot of folks watched Glass Onion this week uh, as the subtitle will tell you a Knives Out tale, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, Ryan didn't want to put, I guess. And I I found myself naturally comparing it in a point for point debate with Knives Out, the first one. And it's like <laughs> I, I don't I've stopped myself at one point. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it differently did, than I did the first uh, because they both exist and you can't change the one came first and one second. And I enjoyed the second one in a different way than I enjoyed the first one. And that's how it is. And I think Bad Batch, like you said, is part of the super connected Star Wars saga, but it absolutely looks different 
and feels different than Andor and is going to. Uh, you know, we got the, from the, the trailer, we got giant, very brightly colored space crabs coming our way. <laughs> and by the way, you know, Dewey and, and Freedy might tell you that uh, bigly space crabs are part of the universe there uh, without oh, a problem. Yeah. So it's all there. And, but all that's kind of drift away. I did uh, at one point this weekend watch Bad Batch uh, uh, episode one. Um, with 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 you know Depp and Balaba and Kane and all that kind of stuff. Excuse me, Caleb. Uh, and mm-hmm. and I I forgot just immediately some of the stuff you're talking about. Yes, there's the big, um, canon stuff, and there's the the the, the, the looking at the galaxy at this very important time in the story. But there's also like Wrecker's funny, Tech is funny, Omega brings such warmth. All those kind of things that are very uh, much a part of Star Wars and unique to Bad Batch. The sitcom-like quality of Sid and Sid's parlor. Mm -hmm. Uh, All those kind of things. uh, I found myself more excited than I've been. And I've loved the show, clearly. But I I think I've been putting the whole thing on the back burner just because I was like, oh, I don't want to have to do it. People are going to fight over this. And I'm right now really excited. And the titles kind of help with that. Yeah, absolutely. I think this uh, episode of the news is just a celebration of the animated side of Star Wars. It uh, is. Hera, and now with their excitement for Bad Batch Season 2, bring on the animation. I guess uh, Hera in live action. But yeah. we celebrated <laughs> Hera in animation. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I said, we, we had touched upon some of this before, and, and this stuff's been out, but wanted to highlight it here. And uh, look, titles can sometimes be looked at as spoilers. And I think I look at them as spoilers more now than I did before. Again, even talking about the, the rumor news, I, I didn't look at uh, rumor news back in the day as spoilers. I just like, oh, it's speculation. It's fun. Something's changed inside me because I think something, Joseph, has changed inside the talking world, <laughs> the pop culture talking world. Uh, so I'll start there. Uh, where are you at with knowing the titles? Do you even want to discuss them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think my reality is an extreme. I, I would like uh, Star Wars to be delivered in a, a uh, brown box, and you don't know what it, what kind of Star Wars it is until you open it. I'd be fine with <laughs> right, that, uh, right, it, right. just as a fan. Uh, but it's also a fun part of the community to have the trailers and the title releases and discuss all that. Um, yeah, yeah. I think for me, with the titles, you know, I I would never want to see them if the creators weren't okay with it. Um, yeah. And, and I like, for example, I don't want to see the titles for Mandalorian season three because I think they have a history right. of being a little bit more on the spoiler side, like you know the Jedi. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yep, I mean yep. that doesn't necessarily say yeah. Of course, Ahsoka, if that if that title had been released before season two of the the Mandalorian, it wouldn't have necessarily confirmed that. But right. um, so and and I think John Favreau seems to have been uh exerting uh, the influence he has to keep things uh, more uh, close mm. uh, to the chest there. Um, but for the, for these, I was kind of excited to see them because there's, there's so in the tradition of Clone Wars and Rebels titles where every mm-hmm. once in a while you can kind of guess which, uh, which three characters might that one be about. But so many of them are just like, that was like crisis attack crash land <laughs> time on a planet and like a, a ton of these are like these could just be the names of random science fiction or self-help books that you'd find in a used bookstore you know it's and and that's what's like fun yeah. and funny to me about the clone wars and rebels titles sometimes they're absolutely on the nose mm-hmm. sometimes they're just like uh, resolutions like yeah. okay <laughs> yeah yeah spaceship flies fast yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah. Love that. No, I'm with you on it too. I, the, your Star Wars in a brown paper bag that shows up. No, you don't know till you, you open it like a, like a mystery lunch packed by mom or Hera. Uh, I, I love that idea. Uh, it's not the way it is. And again, I, I own that I've changed my views on this. I think it is because of the nature of big ticket television stuff, uh, you know, uh, where it's like a, a reveal, a twist. And if, if anything's kind of given away and, and takes the enjoyment, uh, you know, it does affect me. Uh, it does affect me. But I have to admit, like, I, going again, going to Game of Thrones, I, I used to love title release day for Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. It, it used to happen. Like, here's the next 10 episodes of, of season uh, three, I remember, in particular. And season four, I was I was heartbroken. I thought, I thought I saw a title and I said, oh, for sure this death's going to happen. And it didn't happen. Uh, and then after a while, I stopped. I don't know. Just again, I think the way that the, the pundit world kind of takes it in, it just kind of soured on me a little bit. But that said, I think it's kind of, I think you're right about Bad Batch and Clone Wars. It's a little different than the other shows. 
And also there's something for me that gets, it adds a little excitement and it's a little bit of an advertisement for a show that is probably going to be a little lower rated, whatever Mm -hmm. streaming ratings actually are. And before (laughs) that conversation happens of see how bad, bad batch, yeah, I think Disney's expecting this. Uh, there, there is again, a difference and a divide between live action and animation, whether there should be or not, it's a different discussion, but there is. So seeing the titles is an extra, extra boost. And you look at some of these titles. Yeah, you're right. Some, and, and I guess we should say anyone who does not want to hear the titles and has avoided it, now's your time to d- uh, duck out here for about five minutes or so. Uh, but we're uh, going to dive into some of them. Uh, you know, there's some uh, retrieval, entombed, tribe, uh, the outpost. What outpost? Uh, <laughs> is it Miller's outpost, the old stores? I don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of fun, pulpy titles in here. But do any of them jump out to you? Yeah, I mean, I am almost uh, amused by the ones that are just like one word and they almost look like a set of like, remember when all that uh, fridge poetry magnets were really popular and you just have one word and it would be like Shakespeare themed or, you know, Agatha Christie <laughs> themed. This feels like a Star Wars animated television show of fridge uh, poetry magnet titles. Faster, Entombed, <laughs> Tribe. Retrieval, yes. metamorphosis. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm very entertained by those. The ones that are getting me excited and getting me to want to, you know, speculate responsibly are the clone ones, right? Yes. Uh, the solitary clone going, all right, cool. Hmm. Who is that? Which, which one? <laughs> it could be a lot, yeah. you know, with uh, all the clone stories we're having. The clone conspiracy and truth and consequences, uh, which seems yes. to be like kind of the mid-season uh, two-parter. Is this the big Cody arc? Um The Mm -hmm. idea of a clone conspiracy is is that uh, somebody who is advocating for the stormtrooper program to move uh, faster saying all the clones are bad. Hey, like that bad batch and that Rex uh, out there causing trouble. They're all bad, you know? Um, So so it it gets fun speculation going. Um, So I'm excited for those. Um, And then the summit in plan 99 uh, the summit was one of the, the names for uh, the rat pack. So I always like that. Um, Mm -hmm. And Plan 99 that gets just gets me excited for like what wild crap has the Bad Batch come up with to call it Plan 99, and then it feels like a pretty obvious reference to you know Plan Nine from Outer Space. So yeah, yeah, very exciting things in in the 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 season finale as well. Yeah, I'm with you on the clone titles. It just kind of you know it's one of the things we're dealing with, and and also you know clones, stormtroopers, and some of those fun and, and deeper canon questions. So absolutely there. Metamorphosis that, you know, like a butterfly. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for what that might mean. Uh, there's one titled Pabu planet mm-hmm. character. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, and uh, looking at some of the, the, the multi uh, release days as well. Spores of war, ruins of war, the summit plan 99, like you said, and we should highlight for those keep it score at home. And you want to plan your, waiting up to midnight or getting up at 4 a.m. to watch them kind of things when they drop. <laughs> January 4th to be, uh, be a two-episode premiere. February 8th, kind of like a mid-season two-episode drop. And then the finale on March 29th is uh, the two episodes, The Summit and Plan 99. And yes, we will uh, remind everyone uh, that also uh, will overlap with The Mandalorian Season 3 set to drop on March 1st. Uh, Just so that's an ongoing discussion about releasing the episodes on the same day and could you move them to Fridays, this and that. I've, uh, you know, I like the idea of Saturday morning cartoons, whatever, do that. But, uh, you know, one of those things that we're just not in the meetings for and we don't know the numbers (laughs) or the reasons why, but it's where we're at. Yes, yes. Uh, must let go and accept that it is something that I can't control other than voicing my opinion of, yeah, it'd be awesome if Bad Batch came out on, on Saturday morning. Uh, <laughs> I think that would be great. Uh, but we should say that we are extremely lucky uh, to have got some screeners, uh, some yeah. digital screeners for Bad Batch. So I know every time we talk about this, we do hear from listeners who some are just like, bring on the Star Wars. I'd take eight a night uh, on a specific night. I just want more Star Wars and I always want to be... Yeah. Uh, real respectful of that. I think for me, it takes a little bit of pressure off. I just really love to like, you know, just let the shows sink in, you know? And it's just mm-hmm. like, I love pizza and tacos. I don't always want to have them on the same night because I want to savor them. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm uh, happy to have uh, the the screener so I can, if I want, I can watch Bad Batch on a different night close mm-hmm. to its broadcast date and really let it sink in and let it turn over in my mind a little bit before we discuss it and then give that same uh, space to Mandalorian. 
Yeah, uh, I'm with you on that there, but we can't change what is. Uh, maybe they'll change it. We'll see. But this seems uh, pretty sad. Pretty sad. Once you got the graphics made, it's hard to change things. <laughs> you can't change that social <laughs> asset. They took down a, I think they took down a She-Hulk and an Obi-Wan Kenobi billboard the size of a <laughs> building true. in L.A. to change the date. So... <laughs> Imagine the, getting that memo at the company who handles the billboards. That son of a boop. That is One a, that's a great short story of the guy who just like, I, I, I just <laughs> put that up. I was 18 <laughs> stories in the sky. It's- the one Can I just the, change the date? Can I just go up there and change just the date? No, a whole new, a whole new poster on the entire building. Okay, okay. this is great, and, and I certainly know this is not just related to Hollywood. That any any town can have a giant billboard. I I, I want to make sure I'm not being a, a, a West Coast elite here, uh, but I love it. at the Comedy Store and then at uh, Mel's Dine and uh, D- Diner down the street from the Comedy Store on Sunset Boulevard. There's two multi-story, like we're talking ten to fifteen story buildings that are the side of it is just billboards. Yep. Uh, including the next uh, next door to the comedy store is the, the famous Continental Riot House, the Hyatt uh, Hotel. And I've watched them. Ch- it, it is a process, man. So I, I, I'm fascinated by having to change that for one day. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's mm, mm. yeah. Anyway, it's, 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 it's work. Yeah. Welcome to Ken and Joseph Talk Sunset Strip Stories here. Uh, let's not forget also, here uh, we will be bringing back the Bad Batch Report, our deep dive, our discussion on the episodes, the fun things, the wild things, the pulpy things, the themes, all the wonderful things that we found in the episodes of The Bad Batch. And look for that shortly. It's coming next week. We'll start diving back in. And we have, uh, we want to remind people, we still have the Clone Wars report to finish. Uh, don't you worry. It is on our docket. We need to review uh, season seven. We're going to look at the Darth Maul comic. Uh, that was uh, the last part of the Dark Horse run. Uh, whether or not we get to Dark Disciple, I've seen some people ask about it. that in our in our Discord. We'll see. We'll see. We'd love to have the time, but do not forget. Or we haven't forgotten. Do not do not worry. We have mm-hmm. not forgotten about Clone Wars Report, but Bad Batch Report returns next week. Dark All Disciple right. is one of my favorite books. I'd love to have the time to discuss it. But uh, as anybody, any listeners have known, it took us a little while to get to Padawan. <laughs> so we'll see. Look, one of my things I did do over the break was I read about 100 pages more in my book on the election of 1912 that I keep telling you all that I'm <laughs> going to finish before next Star Wars read. Almost there, almost there. All right, we are uh, almost out of here, my friends. But before we do, I want to uh, take a, a look at this week in Star Wars history, looking ahead to Star Wars past. Every now and then, we like to celebrate an actual human birthday. And on December 29th, <laughs> 1979, end of this week, Diego Luna was born in Toluca, Mexico. It is fitting that we celebrate Luna's birthday at the end of the year, which featured his character, Cassian Andor, so Prominently. I almost said the year of Andor, but that wouldn't be fair to the other shows that were here as well. <laughs> we love all shows and characters. Uh, but Joseph, what do we joy, enjoy about Diego being in Star Wars? And, and what do we appreciate about, the, uh, appreciate about the character of Andor? Well, I, I think it's great when you can really like the actor and, mm-hmm. and the character. And Diego just seems from all of his interviews and his appearances at uh, Star Wars Celebration and other conventions, he seems so sincere, so committed, so excited. Somebody who, who really understands and wants to be sort of a, a representative of the character of the show of Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think some actors are like, great, I, I did it. I, I said my thing. I don't really know. He, he seems to really be uh, playing that ambassador role and doing it mm-hmm. with such honesty and charm. I couldn't I couldn't find it on a quick search, but I love some of his quotes about uh, not being able to tell his kids things about Star Wars and wrestling with it. Of Like <laughs> mm-hmm. I, my kids love Star Wars and I know Star Wars stuff. You know, uh, I That's love funny. that. Um, and then I think for the character of Andor, oh, what I appreciate about it is multi-layered. Uh, I don't want to ignore the power of the real world representation. You know, mm-hmm. the, the stories we've heard of of people being just deeply moved and, and not thinking they they would hear in a, in a major movie like Rogue One, hear uh, uh, someone uh, using their n- normal Mexican accent mm-hmm. um, and playing such a, a heroic, meaningful role. That is uh, powerful. And then inside the story of Star Wars and or I think... A, is a character contains so much meaning it, mm-hmm. inside the story of star Wars. He, he represents ideas of, of immigration, but immigration caused by displacement forced to leave his own home by yeah. the actions of others. Right. So some vital, interesting storytelling going on with the character. And then I think uh, for me, Ken, I'll just spew out mm-hmm. my last big thing about Andor is it's just kind of close to my heart in the way that 
I think about Star Wars. Sometimes I think on a quick glance, people see Star Wars as uh, dynastic. It's just mm-hmm. about powerful people, right? And it's mm-hmm. just about this Skywalker family, you know, ruining things, <laughs> ruining things, mm-hmm. fixing things, fixing things, uh, ruining things. And I understand that that is a, a valid analysis of the Skywalker saga on uh, on one level. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's so much deeper, I think. There's this huge thread in Star Wars that everyone has value, everyone has skill, everyone has something to offer, you know. Mm-hmm. And Andor Cassian isn't a, a Jedi or a highborn royal or politician. He's just this guy mm-hmm. who has skills. He's observant. He's clever. He thinks ahead. He's got natural uh, charisma in leadership skills. And he has a choice in front of him to use those talents or not. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, whenever we talk about this, I know I go on and on about, yep, Luke is probably the only one who could listen to that, uh, that uh, force ghost whispering in his ear and make that shot to destroy the Death Star. Uh, But Luke can't do that unless this guy, Han Solo, chooses to turn around and make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that idea has always been in Star Wars. But Andor is a character who is who is growing to me from the seed of, of Han Solo turning around storytelling wise. And just really representing that. Here is a character that really reminds you everyone has value in this galaxy. Everyone has skill. And then they're all different from one another's. uh, And then the choice is, do you use it? And that's, to me, what Andor is about. Do you use it? What does it cost? Everything, we'll say, Luthen. uh, (laughs) I love what you're saying there, of course. And yeah, just, uh, you know, having Diego Luna in Star Wars has turned out to be pretty darn cool even if rogue one was the only thing Mm -hmm. uh it just seems like look and it's um it's it's the era where just be careful who you put on a pedestal right just Mm -hmm. be careful but just seems to have someone who's uh just seems to be like a good bloke hanging out in the star wars galaxy i'll just start there maybe a surface level i just love seeing him around a lot of interviews out there. Uh, you can check out everything out there. And, and I just think it's good to have them. Even if Rogue One was it. Uh, you talk about the real world angle of the representation. Uh, that That's important. And that's important uh, when we, we want to build this big table for everyone. Uh, and, and if that doesn't click with you, sure. Okay. Totally get it. But go listen. I always highlight our pal Hector Navarro, Heroes Re- Reforged. Go, go find his story on Twitter of his dad being blown away. Tears streaming on his face of hearing my accent on screen in star Wars. I never would have thought that and and how that seems just so little, but it's giant and it's giant to the people uh, that it's supposed to be giant too. And so Mm -hmm. absolutely don't shy away from that angle of it there. But beyond that, and, and, and Andor is, is, you know, uh, I've heard it described as an immigrant story, right. Or, or migrant worker story, all those kind of, I've heard that all the way around and every one of them, I think is 100% accurate, but like any good star Wars story, it explodes out from that and, and, and it connects with, with uh, everyone else as well. Uh, and, and I think that's the other thing I love about just Andor the character and watching him, watching him go. And, and also him changing my views. This is going back to Rogue One of, of, of me being, this is before we even got Marva and Clem and you know all Bix and Tib Socks, before all, our, all that, just the idea <laughs> Of who Cassian was before that and might have had separatist leanings or a family involved with it and, and having a distrust of the Jedi, but was right there in the center of the rebellion. It seems silly to say, but just hearing that blew my mind for what that meant to the rebellion and for the rebellion and my view of the rebellion growing up, that there wouldn't be different ways to approach it or that everyone would have the same view. Uh, the point is, uh, you know, everyone has the same goals, perhaps. Well, even then it could be debated, but... They're, they all see the, the same end game or at least want to get there, but they all have different points of view and they all have different struggles and they all bring different things to the table. And uh, that's a valuable thing to learn as well. Not that I had this rosy view of the rebellion, but, you know, <laughs> growing up, it just kind of looked and felt uh, one way. And Cassian represents uh, another way, but the same fight. I've always appreciated that. Now we just get to really dive into that. And I uh, can't wait to see where he goes. Yeah. What do you do with it? What do you want to do with your life? Uh, I want to rock and I want to rebel. So there you go. <laughs> Happy birthday, Diego. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. I love Andor's uh, complicated journey to rebellion. And I, I hope to see him on some just thrilling spy missions. Yes. Yes. 
Well, there you go. Uh, we are out of here for today. We're going to let you know where you can find us. We're on Twitter at Four Center Pod. We're on Hive Social at Four Center. Facebook page is uh, Four Center Podcast. We're on Instagram. And don't forget, we are on YouTube. We got some cool things coming, including figure fights. Subscribe over there if you'd like to help us reach our goal of 7,000 subscribers. Podcast is on ACAST, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and more. Just search. You'll find us. Merch is available at tpublic.com slash user slash Four Center. And you can support us directly at patreon.com slash or center. From there, you can get into our Discord where you can let me know. Yeah, yeah, we'd like you to review Dark Disciple. Uh, <laughs> you can also follow me at Ken Napsock. Go to my website, kennapsock.com. Got some new podcast coming soon. Look for that. Uh, comedy shows, nothing new been added yet. Took a little bit of a winter break, uh, but we'll be back up and running shortly. Joseph, where can they find and follow you? Yeah, you can find me on most of the social media at Joseph Scrimshaw. I am still on Twitter as it goes through its. <laughs> it's long, troubling time. Uh, but I'm also on Instagram. Really want to uh, promote that uh, because a lot of people are checking out Instagram. So find me over there. Uh, also on uh, TikTok and Tumblr and uh, Hive and uh, Bungle. I don't know. I just made up that last one. Uh, Mastodon, <laughs> Crustacean. I, uh, Google me. Uh, my website will show up as well as uh, my YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for the support. Uh, this year as I've been building that YouTube channel, doing more short films. If you haven't checked that out, uh, you can check out uh, the short film Peace Fight uh, that I made with uh, Ken and Mark Ellis and more coming in the new year. That is it for me. That is it for us for now. We got questions. We have got a look towards 2023 and a Bad Batch related data bank dive on the way this week. So we got more coming. We're so happy you're here. We'll see you soon here on Force.